Hello everyone, my name is Dan the Tutor. This is a clip from one of my weekly group tutoring sessions at the University of Delaware for Math 221. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you and enjoy. Oh yeah, that's it for exponential functions. Now I'm gonna move on to exponential derivatives. Exponential derivatives. So when it comes to exponential derivatives, the derivative of exponential functions, the one cool thing, and there is exactly one and only one cool thing about exponential function derivatives, and that is the fact that if I have the function y equals e to the x, it is the only function in calculus whose derivative is itself. That's pretty cool. At least I think so. Now if I had y equals e to the 2x, now all of a sudden the problem is impossible. I have e to the 2x in my exponent. Don't worry, it's actually possible. Didn't mean to scare you. But all you need to do is say to yourself, what's the derivative of my exponent? 2x? Okay, well the derivative of that is 2. So my overall derivative is gonna be 2e to the 2x power. This is not a power rule. I repeat, this is not a power rule. We did not subtract one from the exponent. We took the derivative of the exponent, put that in front, and then multiplied it by the original function. That's how you take the derivative of exponential functions. Let's look at a couple more, and then we'll look at those complicated ones that some of you were asking about at the beginning. So let's say I have y equals 3e to the square root of x power. This is especially devious, dubious, whatever. Well, if my exponent is the square root of x, I can rewrite that as x to the 1 half. I need to ask myself, what is the derivative of x to the 1 half power? That would be, that would be a power rule. 1 half times x to the, what's 1 half minus 1? Negative 1 half. So it's 1 half x to the negative 1 half power. That goes in front of everything, along with that 3 there, since the 3 right here is just a coefficient. So it's going to be 3 times 1 half x to the negative 1 half power. I can rewrite that in the next step. And then times my original function, e to the square root of x, or you can write x to the 1 half, it doesn't matter. And this would be our answer. Can this be simplified? Yes. Uh, I think your professor would accept this, so I'll circle this for now. But I also want to say this looks a lot nicer when you write it like this. In the numerator, I have three halves. And then that x to the negative one-half power is going to be the square root of x in the denominator, right? Because a one-half power means square root. A negative sign means put it in the denominator. And then also e to the square root of x power, that's going to be in the numerator as well. Everyone see that? And this would also be another way of writing this final answer. Again, I think both are fine. It would only matter in a multiple choice setting. Okay. And with that, we're going to start looking at some of the more complicated exponential function derivatives. So I'm going to look at one that was similar to the one you guys posted in the chat. Let me know if it's not. I think it's similar. Let's say I have the function quantity x cubed plus 1 times e to the x squared minus 1 power. Is this pretty similar to the one you were talking about? Okay, I'll take that as a yes. I think it was like e to the x squared raised to another exponent. Hold on, let me look. Sure. You can get pretty complicated with some of these powers. Like right now, it's just a product rule, which isn't terrible, except most. Yeah, so it, Go ahead. The example was e to the negative x to the n positive fifth, like raised to the raised, if that makes sense. Can you say it one more time? Y yeah, so it would be y equals, we'll just put x to the fifth. Yep. Uh, plus one in parentheses, like the whole thing in parentheses. I don't think I'm following. No, it's just like x to the fifth and yep. then plus like one as a mm, coefficient. Okay, got Yeah, it. sorry. All good. And then this and is... And then raised. all that in parentheses. And then e to the negative x. And then raise that to the fifth. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, we'll deal with this example since it's hard and very fun. Okay, so the first thing I want to say is I would rewrite this just slightly... You, you would keep the x to the fifth plus one. You're not going to touch that. We are going to use a product rule here. E to the negative x to the fifth. Remember what we said earlier. When you have a power raised to another power, 
What do you do? You multiply. You multiply. So it's e to the negative 5x power now. And now it's a lot more possible. Again, this is just y equals. This is not the derivative yet. Now let's take the derivative, y prime. Notice this is going to be a product rule where this is f of x and this is g of x. So if you remember what product rule says, I'm really hoping you know what product rule says by now, but it's going to be f of x, which is x to the fifth plus one, times g prime of x. What is the derivative of e to the negative five x power? Well, remember what we said earlier? I ask myself, what's the derivative of my exponent, negative five x? It's negative five. So negative five times my original e to the negative five x. That's the first half of the product rule. The second half is g of x, which is e to the negative five x, times the derivative of f of x, the derivative of x to the fifth plus one, that's actually just an easy power rule. It's gonna be five x to the fourth plus zero, since plus one goes to zero. This is it, you can simplify it a bunch, I'm sure. I'm just gonna keep this as the final answer. You get the gist. Any questions on that one? No, thank you. Great. I just had a question. Yep. When you see E, yep. like, I don't know when to differentiate from using, like, the LN. You know what I mean? E versus LN. Are you saying that... Like... Go ahead. I don't know how to... Like, I see E, and I kind of want to use, like, to multiply it by LN to get rid of the E, almost. I don't know. Okay, I see sense. what you're saying. So here's the difference between what you're saying and what we're doing right here. It really comes down to what is the question asking. What, what was the question asking at the, like the first couple questions we were looking at where we did that strategy? The question was solve for x, right? If I want to solve for x, then I need to get rid of e. But in the derivative, e is our friend, not food, as Finding Nemo would say. Bruce, I think the shark's name was. But more importantly, whenever we have the derivative question, we don't take the natural log. That's just blatantly wrong. Well, actually, it's kind of a fun fact. You are going to, it's actually coming up in this class, I'm pretty sure. You are actually going to do that if you haven't done it already. It's called logarithmic differentiation. It's where the first step is you take the natural log of both sides. That Those are monstrous problems, and we'll, we'll talk about that together, I'm sure, at some point. But today is not that day. All you need to do is say, hey, I'm asked to find the derivative. I am not going to write natural log, because the only time I do that is to solve for x. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Okay, any other questions? Um, if you were to simplify this, how would you do it? Because that's what I was confused on. That's a good question. So most people love to just say, oh, I'm, I'm done with this. I don't want to even simplify it. Uh, those kids are lazy, and uh, I'm glad you asked that question. So let's see what this would be if I simplify. There's two things I would say when it comes to simplifying that you need to be aware of. Number one, negative exponents need to go in the denominator for proper simplification. And two, you need to combine any coefficients you have and put them out in front of everything else. So what does that mean? Number one, this first term here, I see this negative five here, that's a coefficient. I'm gonna write that out in front. Negative five times the quantity x to the fifth plus one, that's in the numerator. And the denominator, I now have e to the positive 5x power, right? Because that negative sign becomes positive in the denominator like this. Then plus, there's going to be another fraction bar because I see the negative exponent. In my numerator, I just have 5x to the fourth. My denominator is e to the 5x power. You see that we have the same denominator here. If we wanted to, we could write this under just one fraction bar. So my numerator could be negative 5. I'll even distribute this negative 5 to both terms because I can do that too. Negative 5x to the 5th minus 5 plus 5x to the 4th. All of that is divided by e to the 5x. And at this point, you can like factor out a 5. You can do a couple other things, but really this is about as simplified as we can get. Do you need to make it this simplified on the test? Probably not. I'd be surprised if you needed to. But in case you're curious, this is what I do. Again, the two strategies are if I have a negative exponent, I'm writing that thing in the denominator. And if I have a coefficient, like my 5x there, then I'm going to write that out in front of everything else. Any questions? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, now we're going to move on to some other fun problems. Anyone still writing? Good. 
Okay, so now let's keep going with the derivatives. This time it's going to be, well, I don't want to tell you what rule it is, but it'll, it'll be a rule. Let's say I have f of x is equal to quantity e to the negative 2x plus 1. That's all going to be raised to the, let's say, third power. So for this one, you think about what rule is this? What rule is this? Any takers? Any guesses? Chain rule. It is chain rule. How do we do the chain rule? Great question. So the derivative is going to be f prime of x equals, remember with the chain rule, I work from the outside in. What's the outer function going on here? It's this cubed, this cubed on the outside. I deal with that first. It's a power rule, so I pull the three out in front times the original function e to the negative two x plus one. Now it's raised to the three minus one power, so two. And after I do this, we're not done yet, then I'm gonna multiply this, this is where the chain rule comes in. What's the derivative of my inside? e to the negative two x plus one. Don't shout it out, I'm sure some of you are smart. You don't need to prove it to the rest of us. The only person who has to prove that they're smart is me, and that's because I'm most important. Don't forget it. So again, I ask myself, what is the derivative of my exponent? Negative 2x. I know that derivative is negative 2. And then I multiply this by my original e to the negative 2x power. And then the derivative of the plus 1 just goes away. So that's it. This is a perfectly good final answer. Again, if you're curious on how we would simplify this, first I want to say this. Because of this squared out here, this, this whole thing, I'm going to circle in blue, this whole thing cannot be simplified like this part alone. Everything else can be, though. So I can combine this 3. I can combine this negative 2 to give me negative 6. I can also write this e to the 2x out in front, or e to the negative 2x. And then times the quantity e to the negative 2x plus 1. That whole thing is squared. And like I said earlier, if you want this to be as simplified as possible, you should put the negative exponents in the denominator. So, I, I'm not going to, uh, I'm deciding whether or not I want to. I don't care. I'm just going to keep it like this. You, you get the picture. So again, this was the chain rule. And of course, we are going to look at a quotient rule problem. That's coming up right now. So here's the last derivative question I have for exponential functions. Let's say I have g of x is equal to e to the 3x minus 1 divided by e to the x. And I want to take the derivative of this. Now, if I wanted to, I would use the quotient rule. What does the quotient rule say? <clears throat> what does the quotient rule say? If my numerator is f of x and my denominator is g of x, then my derivative is going to be g of x times f prime of x minus f of x times g prime of x. Hopefully you all know this divided by g of x, that whole thing squared. Now, I've got some good news for us. We can, if we want to, we can do all of this. We can take the derivative of the numerator denominator, plug everything into the formula, or we can use our properties of exponents and completely avoid the quotient rule altogether. What do I mean by that? Notice, I have e to the three x minus one divided by e to the x. Those numbers have the same base, which means I can rewrite this original function before I take the derivative, as e to the 3x minus 1 minus my denominator, so minus x. This simplifies to e to the 2x minus 1. Now if I take the derivative of this, notice this is so much easier. So much easier. So always look out for that. Whenever it's the same base, see if you can simplify. It's going to make your life a lot easier. So now g prime of x, we can take the derivative. What's my derivative of my exponent? 2x minus 1. It's just 2. So 2 times my original, e to the 2x minus 1. There we go. Any questions on that? That's going to pretty much wrap up my talk on exponential derivatives. I'm going to move on to the next topic, which is logarithmic functions. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want me to start doing free weekly group sessions at your university, please post in the comments below or email me at dan at danthetutor.com. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.